Hi folks, we've got a seven inch turned chunk of 1045 steel, which we've got a thread mill, a big hole in, and it'll accept this, which is a one and three sixteenths by 12 uh, thread. Let's give a quick overview of the operations. Let's go make some chips. And at the end, we'll walk through some details on how we did some of the thread milling and other cam operations in Fusion. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So the customer actually sent a print on this one, although all that we're doing is this operation right here for this guy here. And one of the things that's unusual that I don't deal with a lot is having two different chamfer angles. This chamfer here is 45 degrees, but the one up here is actually only 60 degrees, so shallower. So how do we do this? Face off that flat spot, drill a hole so that way we're not plunging in the end mill, an adaptive to get rid of the material, a contour, a contour to clean up this counterbore, chamfer this inside hole. So cool how Fusion does this. The thread mill, um, I use a separate spring press. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. And then the chamfer at the top here. Let's go make some chips, folks. So close. Actually, ooh. Yep. They wanted it tight. There we go.
think this turned out pretty nice. See in there at the, there we go, like so. And if you're new to thread milling, you know, the awesome thing is, well, there's a lot of awesome things, but you can control your thread fit and thread engagement. So that's got a really smooth feel to it. You can adjust that with that pitch diameter offset. You know, if you break a thread mill, they're expensive, so that stinks. But unlike a tap, which is the full size, the thread mill will just fall out. You can get multi-flute thread mills for dedicated pitches. It's not always going to be faster, but you know, you can thread mill on a machine that you can't necessarily rigid tap on because of spindle reversing. So it's a really cool, powerful thing to, to be able to do. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you next Wednesday. First thing we did was a very deliberate on my stock setup. So this is, if I hit I, you can see if I click right there, this is a seven inch OD ring and that's what we actually had to start with. So when I did my setup under stock, I did a fixed size cylinder that's seven inches. That's important because it gives me this uh, area there that's, you know, that was there that we need to machine away, which I care about because I wanted to be able to use my face op. And if I edit that setting, fourth tab over passes, you check multiple depths, you can say the max step down at 0.04, but it needs to see what, where you're going from and to. And I was going from heights of stock top. So stock tops here, models here, it only goes 0.04 increments down, which is just the recipe I wanted to run. Uh, half inch drill just to get rid of some material, no big deal. Adaptive strategy to get rid of most of that. 2D contour to clean it up. Okay, so now, let's see here. Oh, 2D contour. This will clean up that ledge right there. I wish you could pick stuff in the cam side. It'll be that little ledge right there that it'll, it'll clean up. Now for the chamfer, I did it as a 2D contour the other option being a 2D chamfer because right click, edit, under passes, it lets me do multiple finishing passes so I can step out radially, which I, I really like. And take a look if we um, switch your model to wireframe. That's the way to view this, oops, this simulation right here. Turn off the stock, and now just scrub through by drag clicking on here on the green. So that's the kind of view, uh, here we go, right like there. So that's the first pass. There's the second pass. So you can see there, I'm not quite, I've got some room between the end of the tool and that sidewall, which is obviously really important, but I'm cutting um, with a good area of that and chamfer tool, love it. Same thing up here. If you notice, I actually didn't have a 60 degree, I had a, I had a 30 degree, I didn't have a 60 degree chamfer tool. And then I realized, wait a minute here, our thread mill is 60 degrees, just use it. And if we take a look, I wanted to make sure that the flutes were long enough to do it. Same thing, simulate, just scrub through two passes, there's a second pass. And it's close, but, but close is okay. I've got a little bit of room in the bottom, a little bit of room in the top, rock and roll. So the only real complicating thing here is, how do we do the threads? If we take a look at the box from Lakeshore Carbide, you'll see it has 0.495 cutting diameter. All that I did was made a 0.495 uh, flat end mill with a three, 0.34 shank and a 0.1 flute length height. I just gave a quick measurement of what, uh, you know, what that was. It's actually not that important for this, like so. And then 2D, 2D thread. And so what are my settings in thread? There you can see the feeds and speeds there. Geometry. I just picked this inside wall or face. On the top height, I'm going a little bit above and a little bit below, just for good measure. And it's 12 pitch, so one divided by 12 is my thread pitch. 
pitch diameter offset. This is the only thing that's even close to hard uh, to figure out. Let's grab our machinist's handbook. <laughs> it's funny, I call it the machinist's handbook. It's actually the machinery's handbook. Uh, and you should own one if you don't. If you want to support our channel, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. There's a link in the video description through Amazon. We get a little cut. So 1 and 3 16 by 12. Um, it is a internal thread. And if you take a look, the major is 1.1875. That makes sense. And then the minor, the minor, 1.097. If we take a look, that's what the customer had modeled this as, 1.097, so that's good. And that's um, all that I think we need to know. Now I have a, a question for you guys, or just something that I've noticed, and I don't have a, uh, a great answer for you, but it... Now something I've not really ever figured out, a couple things here. So if our major's that, and our minor's that, the difference between those two is 0 0.0905. So that would be... the pitch diameter offset. Now, something I've noticed is you almost always have to do a little bit more than this. I can't tell you why, um, but you can sneak up on it uh, and go a little bit beyond it. A positive number here makes it wider. Can someone explain that to me though, why that is? The other thing I've noticed is, for instance, um, in theory, all 12 pitch um, threads should have the same difference between the minor and the major. So, it, for example, a one by 12 would go from one inch down to the minor of 0.8978. So one down to that, oops, plus this, minus that, 0 0.1022. So that's more than that one. In fact, this latter one I suspect is where we're gonna need to be for this to have a good snug fit. I don't know how or why to explain that though, which bothers me. The last thing that matters is the number of step overs. So this is now radial. The pitch diameter offset is the total difference between the circles. Um, so it's a di diametrical or diameter dimension. Take this, divide it by two, and that means you're cutting about 0.045 per uh, side or on the radius. So when I calculate the number of stepovers, three at 0.015, is, you know, so this divided by three, that's how I got my 0.015. That gives you about three equal um, depths. There's a more conversation to be had about, you should in theory do decreasing depths as you widen out because you're engaging more along the V. Um, but, well, that, that's getting more complicated with it. So that's kind of a basic on Threadmill. I believe the folks at Fusion said they're gonna change this to where you can just have drop down menus for common thread pitches, which will be great. Uh, but that's not an excuse not to be comfortable grabbing this thing and flipping through it. It is an amazing book. I wish I could say I'd read it at all or even a good portion of it, but um, I used to kind of flip through sections at a time and I think I'll start doing that again.